All right, so what we're learning today is called the total change theorem or the net change theorem. So I'm going to write the word net change theorem. Net change between two certain specific points in time. So the integral of a rate of change is the total change or the net change. This is going to come in handy, especially when we deal with position, velocity, and acceleration. And we've kind of already toyed with this a little bit. Um, we've talked about how if I were to integrate a rate, so if we think back to that breakfast line problem, the number of students per hour getting added to the line, if I integrate that, that gives me how many students have been added to the line. So it takes you back a unit. Um, we also talked about, too, that if we're not sure, um, you can always take your y value units and multiply by your x value units, and that will tell you what you're finding when you integrate so our fundamental theorem of calculus said this here, that when I do a definite integral at bound a to b, um, it is simply your antiderivative evaluated from a to b, which means your antiderivative at b minus your antiderivative at a. So this is what we did last class. This is what we had for a warm up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this where it's just my integral from a to b. Ends up giving me my antiderivative at b minus my antiderivative at a. Now, watch what happens if I go ahead and take this value and add it to the other side. And then I get this equation here. My antiderivative at b, or in other words, my end result, um, is equal to that initial value, so that antiderivative at b, plus the integral from A to B, and this integral represents that total change. Um, I don't quite like how they said equals that because it's only this piece that equals this. Um, that's bad mathematical notation. The way it's written, it looks like it's the whole thing equals just that. So um, if you would make some type of note to yourself that lets you know that this only goes to this guy. So if I want to know, let's just say, for example, um, let's go with my velocity at, let's say, three seconds. My velocity at three seconds. This would be equal to my starting velocity, that initial value. We'll just say our starting point was zero. Plus how much it changed from zero to three seconds. Now, what would we be integrating? If I'm getting velocity, what would I be integrating? <laughs> Think, what is my antiderivative? Or velocity, let me make sure I say this right here. Now I'm messing it up already. What do I need to integrate to get velocity? Acceleration, right, takes us back. So I would be integrating my acceleration. Because this here is my v prime of t, right? So we can see that. My antiderivative is velocity. So my function that be integrated would be acceleration. So if I want to know my velocity at 3 seconds, then I would want to find my initial of velocity plus how much it changed at that interval. And so that integral could be giving us a positive value, could be giving us a negative value. Um, and that's going to adjust accordingly. Because if I have that negative value, then that means that my velocity uh, decreased, right? So it's going to go down, and thus I can expect to see that it's less than what our starting point was. Now, we'll deal with velocity, position, acceleration, the back a little bit more. Um, but this fundamental theorem of calculus is basically just for rewriting it, that I can have my end result is equal to that initial value, or we've been writing initial condition. plus the change between that A and B value. Now notice that this is always my lower bound. Okay? So if I want to use this, it has to be a lower bound later. So let's go take a look at number two, since so that's what I made you do. Number two says a car's gas tank contains four gallons of gas. A gas pump can fill the tank at a rate, so we're dealing with the rate, 
gallons per minute. So if I'm going to integrate a rate of gallons per minute, what will I be getting? What would be my units of that? Gallons. If I integrate this rate of gallons per minute, I'm going to get just gallons. All right, so we're going for zero ten minutes. How many gallons of gas are in the tank at five minutes? All right. So I want to know what is that total amount of gallons of gas in the tank? Now they didn't give us a variable to represent the number of gallons of gas. I'm just going to call this G, capital G. Okay. So my number of gallons of gas in the tank at five minutes. So my gallons at five minutes is equal to that initial amount. Right, starting at zero, what was that initial amount that I had? Good, so we're going to fill that in down here. Plus, how much has been added to it? Now, ideally, when we're pumping gas, it only gets added to it, right? Nothing gets taken out. Hopefully, no one's siphoning our gas while we're pumping our gas. That sounds dangerous. Is that even possible? I guess. Okay, so we don't have crazy people like that um, as we pump our gas. So we are going, we want to find, again, this is my initial amount plus how much did I gain from zero to five minutes. Now I'm integrating the rate, okay, so I'm integrating my rate at which the gallons are being uh, placed into my tank. So this, again, tells me uh, the number of gallons, 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 um, added from zero to five minutes, right? That's how much has been pumped into my car. Because it's a rate of gallons per minute. So when I integrate that, I get just the amount of gallons that have been pumped into my car. But I need to consider how much was already in my car, right? Because it asks me, how many gallons of gas are in the tank? Was there any initial amount? And so that's where this comes from. This is my initial amount that I had in the tank. Does that make sense? Our initial amount plus how much has been added will give me my final amount. Okay. So the reason you need to calculate it for this is because you guys have not learned use of yet. So you don't know how to integrate the square root of t 10 minus t. So we're going to use your calculator. I'm going to go ahead. So the integral from 0 to 5 of the square root of 10 minus t. So we want to go and do our, use our calculator for this. <laughs> now, you could choose to graph that function, but since this is just one problem, um, we don't have part A, B, and C. You don't really need to use it over and over again, so I'm probably just going to use my own screen. So on my home screen, I want to know the integral from 0 to 5. So math, option 9, from 0 to 5 of that rate, second square root of 10 minus, we don't have t, we're just going to use x. Okay, so this will give me this value. The V? Since we're following the T equals 5 minutes, so can we plug in 5 or T um, the second step? Right here? Yeah. No, because in order to evaluate this definite integral, I need to first know my antiderivative <laughs> and then evaluate that from 0 to 5. Remember, in our warm-up, we were plugging in only when we were taking the derivative of an integral. Here, I just want to actually integrate. So we can't just substitute. We have to actually find the antiderivative, but we don't know how to do that yet. So that's our recent cap. Good question. Did you guys get 13.628? Okay, but we don't want just that. We want that plus 4. So we get 17.62829. AP exam, we go to three decimal places. It's up to you whether or not you round. I recommend that you don't in case you do it wrong. So our answer would be approximately 17.628 watts. Amelia, what's your question? Um, I remember you saying earlier that whenever we're on the screen, I think it's 
maximum value. Yes. So we wouldn't be able to use t in the circumstance, right? Correct. You have to use the variable x. Yeah, this button is the only button that means variables. Other questions on this? What are the letters for? Which letters? Oh, like why do they have the alphabet on there? Yeah. Um, well, for most people to write messages to their friends. But um, <laughs> what you can actually use it for is you can store a value to those letters. Um, so like, if I wanted, say I had, for, let's just say I had like, um, like 2x plus 5y uh, plus 3. And I want to know what this equaled when x was 1 and y was 2. I could actually store those values in my calculator, just type that in, and then it would actually evaluate it with those values. You don't use it a whole lot. Um, it is kind of nice though for checking answers. Other questions? Now, this piece here, you know that that is 4, so it's okay if you don't write g of 0. You could just say 4 plus that integral and then you evaluate it. Okay, so 3 then, it says gas is leaking from a tanker. Okay, so for number 2, for number 2, gas was being added into the tank. Uh, the tank at a rate of da, da, da. so that rate is going to be positive because it's adding to it right my original amount would be increasing getting gas added to it so my rate ends up being positive so i want to add that amount to it for number three it says gas is leaking from a tanker leaking from a tanker at a rate of this gallons per hour where t is measured out the amount of gas that has leaked out after the first 10 hours is closest to so this one is a little more straightforward. They just want to know how much is leaked out. We don't need to consider any initial amount because it's just simply asking how much is leaked out. So I need to simply find the integral of my rate here. I'm going to write it out 500 e to the negative 0 0.2 t dt. Again, this is my rate of gallons per hour. If I integrate that, I'm going to get just gallons, how much total gallons have come out. And I'm interested from the first 10 hours, so from 0 to 10. I don't need to worry about initial amount, because um, there's no initial amount that is leaked out. And we just simply plug that in and calculate it. So go and put that in your calculator and see what you get. <coughs> Check what you got in your calculator with the person next to you. B, C, D, or E. C is in caterpillar. <laughs> All right. Are we good with this so far? Yeah. Okay. Now let's take a look at one. It's still the same idea, but you've got to be careful. So a cup of coffee is heated up to boiling, in case you forgot, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. What is it in Celsius? 100. 100. Don't you love that metric system? It makes so much sense. Yeah. And taking out the microwave and place in a 72 degree room at time t equal to zero minutes. The coffee cools at a rate of 16 e to the negative 0.112 t degrees Fahrenheit per minute. To the nearest degree, what is the temperature of the coffee at time t equal to five minutes? They gave us a lot of information and some of it we don't need. Also, we have to consider that it is cooling down. So the temperature is decreasing, which means my rate is going to be negative. It's cooling at a rate of this, so the temperature itself has a rate of negative 16 e to the yada, yada, yada. So when we go to evaluate this, we want to know what is the temperature of the coffee at t equal to 5 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and use capital T to represent temperature. So I want to know the temperature at 5 minutes. Now, what is my initial amount here? 212, right? 72 is the temperature of the room. That has nothing to do with the temperature of my coffee. All that tells us is that it has to cool down because it's colder. Ideally, we're not in a 212 degree room. Um, 
So it is cooler than the coffee temperature, so it's going to decrease. So that's where you got to be careful. They're throwing a bunch at you, right? And they even said at time t equals zero minutes closest to that. So a cup of coffee is heated to boiling and then taken in a microwave and placed sitting there, then it starts to cool down. So 212, this is my initial amount. That's my initial condition. Okay, so it starts out at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Technically, that is the temperature at time zero, right? Because we first take it out of the microwave. So now, because it's cooling at a rate of this, I want to subtract however much it changes. Because however much it changes is how much it has dropped, right? We're not getting hotter coffee, we are getting cooler coffee. Who in here does not like coffee? Good, there are some sane people in this world. Mm -hmm. Now, does anyone not like the smell of coffee? Thank you, you like thank smell? you, it smells like garbage. What about tea, you like tea? Tea is good. Tea is That's like exactly. Cool. Uh, you don't like tea either? Do you like hot chocolate? No. Wow. Oh, I like hot So like. Oh, I so you like cold chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cold chocolate. Yeah. Milk yeah. Milk. yeah. So I put it in the like. <laughs> At least you like chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. Whatever. Yummy. Not as good as chocolate milk. Okay. Not okay. I'm sorry. Um, so our coffee was at 212 degrees. We want to subtract how much it has changed in that time. And we're going from time zero to five minutes. Okay, so again, this is a, we want to make sure my rate is negative. Now I could have said, instead of this, I could have said the plus the integral of negative 16 t, yada, 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 right? But it's probably nice to just go take out that negative anyway. But you got to keep in mind that that coffee is cooling. The temperature is decreasing. My original function is decreasing. My first derivative is what? If my original function is decreasing, what's my justification? What's my first derivative have to be? Negative, negative, negative. So that's why my first derivative, that's just a rate, right? So my rate needs to be negative. We wouldn't have brought that negative down. Does that make sense? Are we good? So just be mindful of the situation that you're dealing with. Alright, um, then we can again just simply punch it into our calculator. Anybody do that? Yeah. Alright, what do we get? The answer. So yes, this value ends up being uh, we have minus sixty-one point two five five eight four eight. <laughs> and our answer ends up being we'll see. Okay. So that's kind of the basic idea of our total change. What we have happening here is again my two twelve is my initial amount. And this is how much the temperature changed from zero to five minutes. <laughs> it changed 61 degrees. It decreased 61 degrees, which gives me my final temperature here. So integrating a rate gives me that previous unit, the change in that previous, in that previous unit. All right, so let's take a look at how this, is there really switch to you guys? <laughs> No, okay. It looks really smooth. Sometimes it's So let's see how that um, applies to position, velocity, acceleration. You'll see here it says total change as it applies to rectilinear motion. Uh, kind of a weird word. It's more related to the word rectangular, if you would. Um, so rectilinear motion just simply means either a vertical or horizontal motion. Okay, so just along one axis. For example, I have a bug crawling along a wire. That would be horizontal. Um, a spider walking up a wall would be vertical. I'm not going to be dealing with where I have a bug crawl along a wire, then up a tree, and then around the pole or something like that. Okay, that's too many directions I everyone. Mean, that's many probably multi too hard. What's that? How many eyes does spider have? Depends on the spider. Hey, really? I don't know. I just... Uh, I don't know. know. I heard uh, we're on the street is like eight. As many legs as they have eyes? Yeah. yeah. As many eyes as they have legs? Yeah. 
What'd you say? I just only have two names? Uh, uh, okay. What is that you learned in psychology? Correlation does not apply in causation, whatever. Just because you have one scenario does not mean it magnifies to all scenarios. Something about the generalization game will not be Alright. Man, you guys are good. Okay, so how do, what does this mean for us when we deal with position velocity acceleration? Well, we know from before that if I integrate velocity, that gives me my position, right? It takes me back a step. We can also think of it as or sorry, velocity is just the derivative of position. So integrate a derivative takes us back to the original. Now, this plus c again, that's just my initial condition or my initial amount. Okay, initial condition. Okay. So applying what we were just dealing with is that if I want to know my final position, then I'm going to still use what I just did. What was my initial position? So at time at my beginning starting time. What was that initial amount? And then I can find the change in position, which is my displacement, right? Change in position by integrating my velocity because that is the rate of change of my position. So I'm integrating the rate stuff. So again, my initial position plus the displacement, how much it has changed in that time interval. Similarly with my velocity. If I want to know my final velocity, it's my initial velocity plus that change in velocity. And we are integrating an acceleration because that will take me back to velocity. <laughs> now, we talked about this, uh, I can't remember if it was last class or a couple classes ago. Total distance is different than displacement. Total distance is, if you were to add together all the different lengths that you would, uh, how far did you go? Whereas displacement is compared to your starting point, where are you now? I think we talked about maybe Amy. Was Amy the one that went all over and slept or spent the night at school? Okay, so oh, yeah. <laughs> if Amy right now is sitting in her desk um, on Friday at this time, hopefully she's sitting in this desk, that doesn't mean that she's been sitting here the whole time. Her displacement is zero, her distance, her total distance would be whatever all she did. Okay. Now, I tried looking all through AP stuff to figure out which verbiage they used. Uh, it seems to be every time they want to know total distance, they use that word total distance. But I notice on some problems, on our practice problems, it just says distance. So I'm going to put parentheses around the word total. If you see distance, that means total distance traveled. Um, and our problems here will say displacement. But again, anytime I've seen AP questions, they say total distance. I haven't actually seen them ask for displacement yet. They have no, they might. Uh, but it seems they're most interested in total distance. So total distance, we need to first take the absolute value of my velocity and then integrate. Because again, that takes each, if we think of this, let's just pretend this is my velocity graph. If I were to just integrate it like normal, that I'm going to have these negatives are going to pop, are going to cancel with some of my positives. And that gives me my displacement. So let's say that, let's just start with some numbers. 2, 5, Let's say this is positive 5 amount. Let's say this is <coughs> 2 amount. Let's say this is a positive amount. If I did my displacement from 0 to 7, then it went 5 feet, let's just say to the right and two feet to the left, and two feet to the right again. So that total displacement would have been five to the right, positive five. But if I want to know the total distance traveled, I want to take the positive values of each of these. I don't want that negative. I traveled five feet, and then I traveled two feet, and then I traveled two more feet. So I traveled a total distance of nine feet there. Okay, so in order to get total distance, I need to first take the absolute value. Four. Questions on this? I know we've kind of sprinkled it throughout for the last few days. Okay. So let's take a look at how this could show up on AP questions. 
the spider is walking up a vertical wall. At t equal to zero, the spider is 18 inches off the floor. This should scream to you, initial condition or initial <coughs> amount. All right. So the spider is walking up a vertical wall. The velocity of the spider, yada, 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 is given by the function whose graph is shown at the right. So this is my v of t. This is my velocity graph. How many inches off the floor is the spider at time t equal to 10? How many inches off the floor? <laughs> All right, so we're asked about position, right? How many inches off the floor? We want to know the spider's position at 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to go and use x of t to represent that. All right, so at time t equal to 0, spider is 18 inches off the floor. That means that x of 0 equals 18, right? At zero time, is is sitting here. That looks not good. All right. Now, according to this graph of his velocity, if I were to integrate this for this first chunk of time, did he go up the wall or down the wall? Oh, that's a positive area. It's above the x-axis, so he starts traveling up here. And then, once we go past six, we have what happens next? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so would you agree the spider changed directions somewhere in there? Now what time did the spider change directions? At six. The reasoning for that is because my velocity, my derivative, changed from positive to negative, which indicates it changed directions. Good. Okay, and then he started going after that fly at the top of the wall and he started climbing up again. Okay. So again, in strain velocity gives me how far he has gone. Positive for this problem would be up, maybe would be down. Okay, so what are we interested in? How many of the is a spider at time t equal to 10 minutes? Okay, so we want to know the position at 10 minutes. Right? What was my initial amount again? 18. And we want to know then the change um, from 0 to 10 minutes, right? Because this here is my position at 0. Again, you can write that and you don't have to. So for this one, you're not going to have a calculator for it. They give you the graph. These are nice geometric shapes. Right? So if I add these areas together, uh, let's, let's make these two rows do this area. My middle two rows to this area. My last two rows with Jennifer into this area. Do you think you have a check with someone that is doing the same part as you? So we can make sure we get the right answers. <laughs> what did our group over here get for this trap? 13.5. 13.5? Middle rows, what did we get for this guy? Three. Now, because this is below the x axis, do we agree it's going to be a negative three? Okay. And my last few rows over here, what did we get? Three. Oh, well, that's nice. Okay. So I have 18, and then this whole thing is made up of 13.5 minus three. Plus three. So what do we get for our answer? Thirty-one point five. So the story of the spider here is that he started off eighteen inches off the ground. Then from zero to six minutes, he traveled thirteen point five more inches up. Then he changed his mind turn around. From six to nine minutes, he traveled three inches down. Then from nine to ten, he traveled three inches down. 
questions on that? Okay. What it wasn't? Okay. Yeah, he's fine. Uh, it didn't say anything about anyone killing him, so I think I think he's still alright. Fifteen flies, saving the world. Alright. <laughs> Number five. Particle moves along the y-axis with velocity yada yada. The graph of V of T is shown to the right with positive areas indicated by P, Q, and R. So this is my velocity graph. What is the difference? What is the difference between the distance that the particle travels and its displacement? Leave it to AP to make you do a whole bunch of one question. Alright, so distance again, that's total distance that we're working with. And displacement. So first let's identify our distance. What would be my distance from zero to five? We're going to have letters, right? We agree P plus Q plus Q plus R, right? Because distance, we want the absolute value of each little individual area. So it's <coughs> kind of like this gets turned up. Right. Or in other words, P plus Q, Q plus R. Are we good there? Okay. So then my displacement, displacement takes in consideration those negatives. What would my displacement be? P minus Q plus Q, so let's cancel out. And that R is negative. So we good there. Okay. I want you guys to pick your answer based on that. Let's see if you can. I want you to confidently say, what'd you get for your answer? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, two people are confident. Did anyone get anything other than E? Are you guys with me? Are we awake? Come on, it's the end of the day. We're almost out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Nap time doesn't start. Uh, um, yeah, it is. Um, e. It is the difference between them. So P plus 2Q, whoops, yep, distance minus displacement. Plus R minus P minus R. So we have then my P's cancel out. I end up with 2R, so I have 2Q plus 2R, which is P. Yes? Oh, so I got B, so I was just wondering why you wouldn't distribute like, the minus. We so we do distribute the minus to it, so we have negative p negative r. So I have p plus negative p cancels out, and then I have two q plus r plus r. So this p got turned into a negative, which gives us other questions. Yeah. Um, what is the difference between the distance and the displacement? Do number six because this deals with using our calculator for this, and I want to make sure we don't overthink it. A particle moves along the x axis, so its velocity is given by that. At time t equal to zero, the particle is at position x equal to 0.5. What is the total distance that the particle traveled from zero to three? All right, so I want to know that total distance from zero to three, and <laughs> um. So for this, do we care what my initial position is? No, because I'm not trying to find out its final position. I'm just wondering how much did it go between 0 and 3. So I don't actually care that it started at 0.5. All right, so my total distance. Is going to be how far it traveled from 0 to 3. And what am I integrating to give me that? What is the derivative of position? Velocity. So if I integrate velocity, that will give me back to my position. All right. So I want total distance, though. So what else needs to be added in here? What's that? Uh, we don't need the initial distance because we only care how far it traveled, not what its final position is. 
h absolute value absolute value of my function before I integrate because I want to take all those little areas and make sure they're positive before we add them up okay so absolute value of that now we have our calculator for this does your calculator have absolute value on it yes please use it don't do what I did and forgot about it all right so I want and again, I'm only using this for one problem, so I'm, I'm not going to put it in y equals. I'm just going to do it on the home screen. I want my integral from 0 to 3 of the absolute value of v of t, which is 12t. Well, e to the negative 2t. I'm adding this one. Man, you guys can type so much faster than I can. Please, before you hit enter, double check to make sure it looks like what it says on your paper. <laughs> now, it's going to take a little while to think. And so as we are working on our quizzes, tests, and AP tests, what would we do while we wait for it? Go next problem, sorry, send it up. Okay. Um, did we get 4.1811? Yeah. Good. <laughs> an essay? For like an English class, right? Or a history class? For this, you just do those. Yeah, the free response. <laughs> yeah. So you'll be writing some sentences there, but not like a straight up 500 word essay. <laughs> well, there you go. Take a deep breath. You don't have to. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought about having you guys uh, read and write about. Who truly came up with calculus? I'm still debating that. Alright. Um, I don't have an answer for that. I think they did it independently and didn't realize it. Which is pretty cool, though, that two super guys could come up with calculus or discover calculus. Alright, uh, did we say D? Sorry. Yeah. Alright. Um, let's go ahead and go down to number 8. 1973. They made them do a lot for this problem. Which, by the way, I looked it up. They did not use calculators in 1973 on the APA exam. <laughs> um, were your parents alive in 1973? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You guys are so young. There's got to be someone whose parents were not alive in 1973. No? Okay. Alright. The acceleration of a body moving in a straight line. Of a body <laughs> is given by a of t equal to 8 minus 6t. If the velocity of the body is yada yada, and if s of t is the distance <laughs> from the origin, what is s of 4 minus s of 2? So they're asking us to do quite a bit here. Because our final thing is we want to find the position at 4 and subtract from that position at 2. But before I can do that, I need to know what my position is, right? So we need our velocity. But we don't have velocity. They gave us acceleration here. But they did give us this initial condition here for velocity, so we know that V of 1 is 25. Do you agree with that? Does anyone agree with me? Yes. Okay. All right. But I do know that velocity is simply the integral of acceleration. So let's go back to our old indefinite integrals. It already feels like forever ago. 8 minus 6t dt. What'd you say? Um, no, because this is just distance from the origin at first, so that's really just its position, position from its starting point. Alright, um, let's integrate this. What's my anti here? 8. Yes, but let's do T. Okay, good. And then, how about this guy? Minus 3T squared. Do we agree with that? Or we can simplify here. 
And what else? Plus C. Plus C. Yeah, we're back to indefinite intervals, right? So this required us to uh, solve for the general velocity. But we want the specific velocity point. What do I do next? <laughs> Yeah, we need to find what C is so we can know the specific velocity for our situation here. Alright, go ahead and do that. Solve or substitute what you know. Solve for C. So again, I'm just taking one, putting it in for my time, setting it equal to 25. What do we get for our C value? <laughs> All right, um, so then my velocity is 8 T minus 3 T squared plus 1. Do we agree with that? Okay. Now it says, <laughs> it says what is S of 4 minus S of 2? So my position at 4 minus my position at 2. So we could do this again and find my actual position function, then find the position at 4, position at 2, and subtract it, right? Turn to your shoulder partner, see if there's anything else you think we could do using what we've learned. <laughs> So we could we could just plug it in because that's not so good. So just look at that. Right? Wait, do you have to go guys? Wait, do you plug it in like you don't know? Right? 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 Alright, let's go bring it back up front. What are our genius ideas that we came up with? Velocity is the derivative of position. We have to do something to reverse it back. So we said that we what we do know we can do without a doubt is we could go ahead and integrate my position, sorry, integrate my velocity function and get the position, but we have the plus C and all that, yeah, 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 right? Or, I want to know, sorry, we use S. I want to know the change in position from four to two. So could we say, any more room, okay. S of four, minus s of 2. How do we find the total change? The net change? What represented the total change? <laughs> this! <laughs> this is my total change or my net change, right? Total change, net change, was just simply actually doing that integral from bound to bound. Specifically for our total change in position, integral of velocity. So, we could save ourselves time here. And do the integral from 2 to 4 of my velocity. Because if I were to actually do this integral, what's the antiderivative of v of t? Position. Oh, yeah. Right? Are we doing that? So technically what the inside of this is, is just my position function evaluated from 2 to 4. Then the theorem of calculus says, well, we just do that at 4, and then we subtract that at 2. Does that make sense? So you can go the long way of integrating this, solving for your C and everything, uh, or the, I think, quicker way is this is just that change in position from 2 to 4. So that's my integral from 2 to 4 velocity. Um, either way, you end up getting, well, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I won't tell you. Okay, questions on that? 
So we would, <laughs> um, so I would take the, so the integral from two to four of my velocity. Find my antiderivative here. So I would have uh, uh, 4t squared minus t cubed plus 20t evaluated from 2 to 4. Then you do that substitute in minus that substitute. Does that make sense? Yeah. A lot for that problem though, right? All right. Questions on that? Okay. Too much multiple choice. Let's take a look at a response to that problem. Or not. Is it excellent? Let's do. I don't think I made you guys do this one yet. So let's go to number 12. Does this look familiar to you? No. 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 Now, this is a calculator problem. It says the particle moves along the x-axis, so that its velocity is given by that, and the position here. So again, this is probably some type of initial condition. All right, write a polynomial expression for the position of the particle at any time t equal to zero. Time t greater than zero. So position, they said x of t, make sure you use x of t. Okay. x of t is equal to the integral of what? E of t velocity, so 3t squared minus 2t minus 1 dt. This is kind of what we were just doing before. Antiderivative would give me t cubed minus t squared minus t velocity. Are we good? But we have actual information given to me for my initial condition. <laughs> so let's go ahead and use that and solve for C. I'm going to rewrite this in function notation. X of 2 is 5. So then I have taking 2 and putting it in. 2 times 2 squared minus 2 plus is 5. Solve for C. C is three. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so then I have my position function C cubed minus T squared minus T plus. So that's kind of like the first part of what we did last. Now, I like part B. This is pretty cool. For what values is the particle's instantaneous velocity the same as its average velocity on the closing point? Instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous means I can know the velocity at any given point in time, right? So be careful with this. What is What represents my instantaneous velocity? You guys are all scared because I said be careful. Yeah. Doesn't B and T allow me to know my velocity at any point in time? Now you're thinking derivative, right? You're like, but derivative was instantaneous slope, right? Velocity is the derivative of position. So the derivative of position gives me my instantaneous velocity, right? But this here, that is just my instantaneous velocity. Does that make sense? Are we good with that? Okay, I heard. So instantaneous velocity means my velocity at any point in time. I already have that equation given to me. I can take t equal to whatever value I want in my domain and get my velocity at that exact moment in time. Thinking in terms of derivative, instantaneous velocity or instantaneous rate of change of position, because velocity is a rate of change of position. Change of position. 
would be the instantaneous slope or the derivative of x. So just be careful there. Instantaneous velocity is the actual v. Now, average velocity. How do I find my average velocity? Yeah, I'm going to use um, the endpoints, my interval here, to help me find that slope. Remember, average velocity, average rate of change is just algebra 1 slope. So again, be careful. Velocity is my rate of change of position with respect to time. So my average velocity is change in position over change in time. Do we remember this guy? Kind of have to go back a step. Your average velocity is change in position over change in time. Think about velocity, miles per hour. How many miles have you traveled in a certain amount of hours, right? Position over time. Okay, so we want our instantaneous to be the same as my average. Let's go and find our average. Okay, um, so I need my position at 3 minus my position at 0 over 3 minus 0. Where did I get those values 3 and 0? Yeah, from the close to the interval. Okay, um, how do I find x to 3 and x to 0? Yeah, we used part A for that. How convenient. All right, so we plug it in there, and we end up getting... Should I have it on the other page? when we go through doing that work is five. Now I want to know when does five equal the actual velocity? Three t squared minus two t minus one. Um, how can I use, because this is calculator, right? How can I use my calculator to help me find that answer? I hear graph. What do we want to graph? All right, so I hear set it equal to zero, and then graph that. So if I do that, I'd have 3t squared minus 2t minus 6 equal to zero. Um, and then what am I looking for when I graph that? The zeros. And I can find my zeros by doing second trace, and there's an option for zero. Now, I want to make sure we also know the other way we can do this through calculator, because... I've come across some of us that did not remember this from algebra. If I have two equations set equal to each other, I can just put this in y1, put this in y2, and do what? Find where they intersect, right? Same thing. For this problem, it's six and one half dozen the other. It's going to be a job that's not a for some problems, it might not be so easy. Like, what if this was sine of 7 pi over 6? To subtract that over, it kind of gets a little complicated. Type of so you can go either way to your zeros with this guy or your intersection with that, whichever you prefer. Okay, now the other thing is make sure you're mindful of obeying this closed interval here. We want only the value that falls within there. Did any of you guys go ahead and do this while I was talking about your no. No, what did you get? That sounds beautiful. 1.786. Anyone confirm that? Are you just confirming because it's no one who's smart? No. Good. So we've got confirmation um, at T, we're talking about time, equal to 1 point. 1.786. Six and what is time measured in? Oh, they didn't give it to us, so I guess we don't have to do units. Okay. Yes. Um, so I was just saying that you could do it either way. You could graph this and find where your zeros are, or you could set each piece in y1, y2, kind of thing. So either method, it gives you the same. Okay. 
Question on that. Alright, so C says find the total distance traveled. Again, this is calculator problem. So write your setup, because you do need to show what your setup is. And then you can use your answer. So total distance. And we want to go from 0 to 3. What do I what do I integrate? I heard position, I heard velocity. What do we want to integrate? Velocity. Because that takes me back, right? But we want total distance, not displacement. So what do I need to add in? Absolute value. And again, this is calculator, so use your calculator to do that for you. Oh, the answer is right there. <laughs> And then your calculator will tell you that it's approximately 17 minutes. <laughs> All right. So again, always show your setup. Show where your numbers come from. If you have no work to support it, you don't get the points even if it's right. Questions on that? Okay. Um, on the last page, there's a problem about a wild unicorn. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like it's just a repeat of multiple questions before it. So feel free to not do that one. <laughs> the very last one, 17, wild unicorn. Um, it's not really much different than the previous ones. But please do do the read Your homework is to finish up whatever you need to do. Minus the wild unicorn.